In a perpetual inventory system, the inventory and cost of goods sold accounts are updated with each sale. Imagine an accountant next to each customer in line at the register. As the cashier scans each item, the accountant quickly removes it from inventory and adds it to cost of goods sold. Clearly, this scenario would be absurd, but barcodes and scanning machines make this possible. Thanks to barcodes and scanning machines at the registers, inventory can be tracked in real time. Therefore, the amount of inventory on hand is always current. Under the perpetual cost system, the computation of the cost flow is made at each sale. For example, a business purchased units for inventory on January 1st, February 1st, March 15th, April 1st, and April 20th. Assume that this business is using the last in, first out method, or LIFO. What are the last units? Well, it depends on when the sale occurs. If a sale occurs on March 13, then the last units are the ones purchased on February 1st. If a sale happens on March 17, then the last units are the ones purchased on March 15. In a perpetual inventory system, the notion of last or first or average is computed with reference to each sale and the inventory that we add on hand right before that sale. In a periodic inventory system, the records, both inventory and cost of goods sold, are updated periodically. This could be daily, weekly, monthly, or however often is wanted. The inventory account is not systematically updated at each sale. With the periodic inventory system, the count may be done when merchandise inventory is low, perhaps during the off season when there is less to count. Since inventory numbers are not updated until the end of the period, the exact amount available in real time of inventory and cost of goods sold is not available. Therefore, in a periodic inventory system, a business would not know the exact quantity of inventory on hand in the middle of the period. It only knows how many units it had when the period started, and it will know how many units it has remaining at the end of the period. For example, Company ABC starts with beginning inventory of 10 units. Goods are purchased and sold throughout the period of one month, say January. At the end of the period, a count of inventory reveals 12 units. This means that the company sold nine units. Keep in mind that each cost flow assumption, LIFO, FIFO, or weighted average can be applied in a perpetual system or a periodic system. The result is that a LIFO periodic cost flow will give us different results than a LIFO perpetual cost flow. With the FIFO inventory valuation system, the oldest units will be deemed to be sold first. Assume that company ABC is using a perpetual inventory system and a FIFO inventory valuation method. Its beginning inventory includes 10 units. Goods are purchased and sold throughout the period of one month, January. For the first sale of seven units on January 4th, all seven units will come from the 10 items available in beginning inventory, which was $1.25 per unit. The five units purchased on January 10th and six units purchased on January 30th would not be relevant for the sale on January 4th because those purchases had not yet occurred. By the time the next sale of three units occurs on January 22nd, there are eight units in inventory, three remaining from beginning inventory, and five from the purchase on January 10th. Since the company is using FIFO, the oldest three units are deemed to be sold first, the ones from beginning inventory at $1.25 each. There are no more units left from beginning inventory. Therefore, by the time the sale of two units on January 28th is made, the oldest units are the ones purchased on January 10th at $1.35 per unit. The cost of goods sold under the FIFO method would comprise all of the beginning inventory units and two units from the January 10th purchase. The remaining three units purchased on January 10th, as well as the goods purchased on January 30th, would remain in ending inventory. The LIFO method of inventory valuation in some respects will be the opposite of FIFO. With the LIFO inventory valuation system, the units purchased most recently will be deemed to be sold first. 
Assume that company ABC is using a perpetual inventory system and a LIFO inventory valuation method. Its beginning inventory includes 10 units. Goods are purchased and sold throughout the period of one month, January. For the first sale of seven units on January 4th, all seven units will come from the 10 items available in beginning inventory, which was $1.25 per unit. The five units purchased on January 10th and six units purchased on January 30th would not be relevant for the sale on January 4th because those purchases had not yet occurred. Therefore, the units in beginning inventory were still the most recent units purchased. By the time the company sold three units on January 22nd, it had eight units in inventory, the three remaining from beginning inventory and the five purchased on January 10th. Since the company is using LIFO, the most recent three units are deemed to be sold first. These are the ones purchased on January 10th at $1.35 each. There are now five units in remaining inventory, three from beginning inventory and two from the purchase made on January 10th. By the time the company sells two units on January 28th, the oldest units are the ones purchased on January 10th at $1.35 per unit. The six units purchased on January 30th would not be relevant for the sale on January 28th because that purchase had not yet occurred. The cost of goods sold under the LIFO method would comprise all of the units purchased on January 10th and seven units from beginning inventory. On the other hand, remaining inventory is made up of three units from beginning inventory and all the six units purchased on January 30th. In times of rising inventory costs, the weighted average method serves as a middle ground between the FIFO and LIFO methods, so that inventory values and cost amounts will fall between FIFO and LIFO values. The weighted average cost of inventory is computed and recomputed each time a sale is made. Suppose that company ABC used the weighted average cost of inventory. The first sale happened on January 4th. At that time, the only units in inventory were from beginning inventory. Therefore, there is nothing to average, and the cost of each unit is simply $1.25. On January 10th, however, the company purchased five additional units at $1.35. It now has three units from beginning inventory at $1.25, and five units from the January 10th purchase at $1.35 a new weighted average cost is calculated. Assume the calculation came to around $1.31 per unit. The January 22nd and 28th sales, combined five units, will both be recorded at a cost per unit of $1.31. By the time both sales are fulfilled, the company will still have three units at a weighted cost of $1.31. It then purchases another six units on January 30th for $1.45 each. A new weighted average cost is calculated. The ending inventory will be composed of nine units at $1.40 each.